everyone, and welcome back to episode 11 of Team Yap, the Pokemon podcast. I am your co-host, Emily Brewer. And I'm your co-host, Chris Levela. And we have for you today a spooky Halloween special of Team Yap. Yep, spooktacular. And we are actually like so ahead of the game right now, recording this for you in advance of Halloween. So if any lucky listeners actually happen to listen to this on Halloween, it will be legit and relevant still. (laughs) Timely. Uh, Timely, that's a good way to put it. So Chris and I were discussing um, last week. We're like, you know what? It's Halloween. There's actually like quite a bit of creepy lore surrounding um, Pokemon that we thought would be appropriate to get into for this Halloween special. Uh, Particularly like there are creepy pastas that have to do with Pokemon, but then there are also just like all the ghost type Pokemon and the kind of like ghostly haunted houses that appear in the series. Um, And different Easter eggs through the games. Yeah. So so there's actually quite a bit of content that we can talk about here. We're going to try our best. We are dealing with some technical difficulties today. Um, the internet is out in the office and not just the office, but the entire city. So we it's are at, wonderful. It's, it is wonderful. And we are at the mercy of um, our phone's data and uh, poor service in the office, as well as um, procrastination for not taking notes um, an hour before the podcast actually starts. It's okay. It's fine because both of us procrastinated and now we just have more time to bring you this podcast. Exactly. So, so we actually have, we've got quite a bit to chat about, um, today and I don't know where we want to jump into first. Like, should we start with the classic? I think it'd be good to lead in with the classic because, you know, from the original games, a classic, even before the creepy pasta, I mean, this place was terrifying Mm -hmm. kids. It terrified Mm -hmm. me. Like I, I, the music, I genuinely uh, dis, like disturbed me, upset me as a kid a little bit. It is iconically. I don't creepy. think I had. I don't think I had an original Japanese version or anything <laughs> yeah. like that. But um, I actually, from time to time, will pop open the game. Will pop open Leaf Green, and go to this town just to experience it, oh, um, gotcha. like legitimately, instead of just like looking up YouTube and the song. But sometimes I'll do that too. But that just makes me want to play Fire Red again. I haven't gone back to any of my other games already, so. Let's ignore that for let's, now. Let's stop on that track before it gets too far. Um, so Lavender Town, the classic. The, uh, I, I mean, ultimately in these days, I, I love the music. I, I adore, I mean, I adore most spooky tracks. Um, it's incredible, really. Like, it is, it is a good soundtrack. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and just so much surrounding Lavender Town, including my wonderful Cubone and Marowak. But before that, uh, Lavender Town itself and the music, the uh, classic classic tale of Lavender Town syndrome. I don't know, Emily, if you had anything you wanted to lead with. Um, well, I do have the Wikipedia page pulled up here. Mm. Um, and... Unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to read it yet. And so I may just like, I think ta- I think talking about it from like personal remembrance first and then maybe reading a chunk from the Wikipedia would be fun. Yeah. Um, I remember as a child and maybe like not a young child, like probably like a preteen, like being really into Pokemon and reading or listening to YouTube videos about um, Lavender Town Syndrome which was essentially like um, they're calling it an urban legend on the Wikipedia page, which I think is like a good way to put it because I don't think it was ever confirmed. It was never really confirmed. That um, anything was really happening. I I think it is a confirmed thing that like the, you know, there was an original version of the game and then new. They changed the like frequencies in the song. Because it was... I think it was actually like partially making some people sick. Yes. Am I right? I think it I think it was, but I think like the it wasn't, the it wasn't urban the legend extent. part of it was like people were like playing themselves yeah, because of it. Which I mean um, trigger warning for the subject matter. Yeah. Um but I don't I, that I believe was debunked and it was because like 
with children, mm. um, you can hear higher frequencies yeah, than there, adults can. Yes, it was something about there being higher frequencies in the song that uh, younger audiences could hear that older ones couldn't. Now, the the creepypasta, Lavender Town Syndrome, that whole thing, that would take it a lot further than that. But um, I, I do believe there was an actual frequency getting to people, younger people. Mm. And so they uh, put out a new version of the game with uh, leaving out those frequencies or changing those frequencies. Yep. Um, which may have been due to something that was in the audio waves uh, when you put it through a spectrograph. Yeah, so the Wikipedia that's what the called. Wikipedia page says that um, the this this urban legend that claimed that lots of these Japanese children had either um, passed away or um, were acting erratically was because of uh, certain binaural beats and high pitched tones only audible to them, which caused um, headaches, um, insomnia, violent behavior, and even brain hemorrhaging. Um, and so then the what the site the Wikipedia page says that a fabricated illness was dubbed Lavender Town Syndrome. And the original story went viral after a creepypasta version of the story was spread on websites such as 4chan. Good old 4chan. Good old 4chan. Um uh, people have added various details to make the story more convincing over time, such as photoshopping images of ghosts and the Pokemon Unknown. Mm. into spectrogram outputs of the Lavender Town music. Yeah. Um, it's also claimed that this claimed that the song was quietly changed for international releases, releases of the game. Um, certain versions claim that the game's director wanted the tone in the game to annoy children instead of cause harm, while others claim Nintendo was in collaboration with the Japanese government. Okay. Um, so <laughs> even the Wikipedia yeah. article is getting cons That's conspiracy here. Crazy. Um, weaponizing Lavender Town Syndrome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's interesting. Like, I mean, so a lot of this stuff is alleged. Mm. Like, I don't think it's ever been proven. Okay. I do totally get that, though. If I could see that the um, the intention behind putting in some frequency that can be heard but is very, like, annoying that I could get because they would want the, so the song to like disturb you, mm -hmm. put you off. Um, so that I could see, but so no one was actually getting sick really at all from this. It was all just alleged. Yes. Legend stuff. Okay. Yep. And so this article goes on to say that other creepy pastas carried links to the lavender town syndrome, the creepy pasta lavender town and Pokemon seven thirty one linked the syndrome to a Pokemon programmer attempting to brainwash children for military purposes, only for the process to fail resulting in the children's deaths. So, I mean, it's, it's <laughs> Pokemon to make child soldiers. I mean, you know, it's not, it's not a, um, it feels like that's not unlikely of a thing to have actually happened, though this is, this is all, um, conspiracies aren't the right word. It's, it's a creepypasta. Like it is, it is literally Insane. just like a made up story. <laughs> um, uh, that, well, yeah, exactly. It is a very, very made up story. Um, so there's way more lore. That last bit, I didn't know about any of that. Well, there's, and like, there's way more lore that goes into it and connections between certain things. And there was another, like, this is saying that the, the spread of Lavender Town Syndrome is believed to be due to its association um, with the Denosenshi Porygon incident. The episode resulted in many children no. across Japan suffering from seizures and its correlation with Lavender Town Syndrome's events being considered to have provided grounding for the creepypasta. Yeah, because that was one of those banned episodes um, uh, due to the seizures, those mm -hmm. Porygon episode. Uh, I think they went into like a digital world kind of thing. And which, so there was a lot of bright and flashing lights. Exactly. Uh, I think there was also guns heavily featured in that episode. Interesting. Um, which fun there, I don't know if it was just that episode, but I mean, there's also, I'm going down the banned uh, episode rabbit hole another time, but... Uh, it's like there, there's episodes of Team Rocket just pulling out a pistol and like threatening a dude. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> there, it's, um, it's wild. So it's interesting because like, uh, so what that is saying is because the the Porygon episode incident was is 
actually happened yes, and that caused was a, that was a real thing. Caused seizures. And so because that was a real thing that actually happened, people started linking this f- f- uh, fabricated lavender town syndrome with it. And mm. so it it gained traction and it's like where this believability thing, because of it. Where this dangerous thing with Pokemon was correct, so therefore exactly. this other thing must be too, yeah. which doesn't work at all, but you know. No, it doesn't. And so we'll do um it is um it is fascinating to think about. And um, so there is way more information like about this. And this is why like, I, re- I regret not looking into this sooner to like having <laughs> some more synth- synth- synthesized information yeah. um, about this. But if you are curious in learning more, there is, are like thousands, I'm sure, of articles around um, on the Internet for you to dive into and get lost in because even as a teenager that's oh surely <laughs> my, i mean new, new, i was super into it <laughs> new pokemon creepypastas are definitely yeah. being made every day and that just stems from pokemon itself can be very creepy when you put a lot more thought into it like mm-hmm. pokedex entries can be very very wild um things throughout the games and the different creepy things they'll just add in and have lead to absolutely nothing but mm-hmm. Sure as hell scared scared me to death when I was a kid. And, you know, and so just Lavender Town in general, um, it's saying in this article that, like, you know, um, a big part of the reason why this creepypasta kind of took off was because the Lavender Town, Lavender Town in general and the theme itself already created this sense of uneasiness yep. because the, the theme is creepy. Oh, yeah. And, but then Lavender Town itself is creepy. Like, I mean, it contains, um, I don't know exactly what it's called. It's, it's a cemetery for You've got the Pokemon Tower. The Pokemon Tower, which yep. is essentially just the graves of all of these Pokemon that have died. Pokemon Tower or Lavender Tower? Um, it it's one of those. I'm not sure. If, if we had internet, we could, um, um, we could find that out really quickly. Um, but like, which, you know, with Pokemon, it's always been like, oh, they faint. And then you just recover them at, um, a Pokemon center. But with, with Lavender Town, it's like, oh no, Pokemon can actually die. And there are some like really unsettling, um, kind of like NPCs that you can talk to Mm -hmm. where they're like there and like grieving their dead Pokemon. It's also Um, a very small and isolated town. Yes. Because, like, the only the first way you get there, I I believe, because I don't know if you can get there any other way before uh, is going through Rock Tunnel. Okay. Um, You might, there might be another route, or, oh, no, right, because it's you choose between Rock Tunnel or Cycling Road, I think. Interesting, okay. Is that it? I don't remember. remember. It's been too long. It's been way too long. Now, is Lavender Town in Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee? Yes. Do you recall it having the same impact as in the original? It definitely didn't. Interesting. They really toned it down. I I don't know if it was more so toned down like intentionally or if it was just, it just felt that way because Let's Go Pikachu Eevee, very cutesy style 3D game. It's so much more modernized. They can convey a lot more now. It's like with those old pixels and all that, you just had, I mean, you just had the 8-bit, you just had... The music mm-hmm. was what it was, and so that added a lot more to the, like, the, I don't want to say analog, but the much older feel to it added to the creep vibe. Um, let's go Pikachu, let's go Eevee. I want to replay it, but also I do kind of remember at least some, like, there's more scenes with um, Marowak okay. in the tower. Like, you even get, once you defeat it, there's a, a scene of, like, Marowak's soul going to rest, and it's kind of, like, sweet almost will you so that's a good segue into explaining the lore of um marowak and cubone and lavender town if yeah. you want to go on go for um, that so marowak and cubone from what i gather it, there wasn't anything special in terms of before this it was just a cubone and a and its mother marowak um but the the marowak was uh taken by team rocket and killed whether it was like a thing they took it and used it as one of their Pokemon and abused it so much that it died or something Mm -hmm. we we don't fully know. We just know that Team Rocket is in the Lavender Tower and um, Marowak's spirit is kind of guarding the top floor. Um, 
because I mean, Team Rocket in the original games, the their sprites they <laughs> their sprites had whips. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> in the old red, blue. I don't know about green, but I would assume. I didn't so realize well. that the old just generic Team Rocket grunt had a whip added to its sprite as well. Wow. Yeah. Um, never again in another game after that. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> uh, there was like, there's no Jesse and James. They they do exist in Pokemon Yellow. Um, but it's like no, it's just generic grunts. They they killed Mama Marowak, and you believe it. Um, and so the Cubone is taken in by Mister Fuji, okay, an old man living in Lavender Town, who was uh, the reason we go into Pokemon Tower in the first place because he's being held captive by Team Rocket. Mm-hmm. Um, and Mister Fuji was from my brief looking up because I remember this stuff is true. But Mr. Fuji was one of the, if not the main founder of the Cinnabar Laboratory. Okay, yep. Um, the place where they created Mewtwo. Yep. Um, how he gets from there to here, I don't fully know, and that's where, you know, more research would have come into play. But, um, yeah, from what I know, Mr. Fuji moved to Lavender Town uh, and just lived a life taking care of Pokemon, um, including the Cubone. That lost its mother. I don't. I don't fully know how they get together and all that. And I believe uh, the anime Pokemon Origins, an episode actually focuses a little bit more on Lavender Town. I believe. Um, I think you're right because you know something else that I was going to talk about with Lavender Town is one of the NPCs that you talk to outside right of after leaving Rock Tunnel. Yep. Um, asks asks if you believe in ghosts. And um, I I can't remember what happens if you say yes, but if you say no, the NPC essentially goes, "Oh, really? Then what's that white hand on your shoulder?" And that was that was the start of Pokemon. Just like occasionally, one off in any of the games. I don't I don't think there have been any recently. I can't think of something in Sword and Shield or Scarlet Violet or even Sun and Moon. Yeah, I'm not sure. But um, where they'll add in just a little creepy thing that just seems very out of place like Mm -hmm. what is this here for does it lead to anything no more often than not no yeah it's just there just to creep you out yeah but it's cool it is and uh but speaking of origins um this twitter post is talking about how um the same dialogue about asking if you believe in ghosts mentioning the white hand um is in pokemon origins but before the white hand is ever mentioned for a few short frames, if you look closely, you can actually see it um, on his shoulder. And I'll, show, I'll just show Chris quickly in, here. In the anime, yep. Yeah, in the anime. Yep, so it's, can, a, it's a cool little kind of callback to that. And see, it, it, it's like a very, very transparent white mm-hmm. hand. So, so, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of lore that comes with Lavender Town. And I think it, it was important to start with that because... That was like the beginning oh, yeah. of um, creepy uh, Pokemon re- or creepy things in Pokemon games. And so I think that's a good way to transition into some of the, and especially what you were saying about the little things in the games that are kind of creepy, some of the houses that you kind of can run into in some of the Pokemon games. Um, I will, I'll start and I'll say that the one that I have the most memory of and maybe the only memory of is um, the old chateau in um, Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. Is it in Platinum? Yeah, it's in all of them. Actually, in um, Platinum, you can, well, in all of them, you can go there as mm-hmm. soon as you beat Gardenia. But in Platinum, you can actually get Rotom in the main game. Okay, interesting. I, um, so I remember. I remember being like really drawn to that um, house as a 11 year old because <laughs> um, Pearl was my first game. And, and so creepy old forest house in a Pokemon game. What cool stuff happened in there? It was dope. And so and then like the ghost girl um, that you can see sometimes. And then like, it, how does that work? Like you enter I, into the room and I believe it's there there's sometimes like, or something. I think there's like two different rooms or maybe it's just the one. There's one room along the stretch of rooms where, like, it's, like, one room, there's Rotom's TV room, and then it's, like, two or three more rooms after that. One of those rooms, not Rotom's room, if you go in and out three times, I don't know if it's a set number of times or if it does just randomly happen, mm-hmm. but 
um, you sometimes you'll go into that room and I noticed it at first because I went into the room and I couldn't move. And I'm like, wait, what's happening? Mm-hmm. A scene was playing and I didn't realize because you can see into the room next to you. Yep. There's a little girl NPC just standing there and then she just leaves. Mm-hmm. That's it. There's no dialogue. There's no nothing. I think the music doesn't play until after. She oh, leaves. I think you're right, too. Oh, my God. It's so I creepy. Remember, I rem- I'm remembering like silence. Yeah. And then it starts. Is the other room the dining room? Why am I like thinking that that is one of I, the rooms that she appears in? Because I'm wondering if she appears in there or if that's the room you exit out to when you go back. Oh, the maybe. Yeah, you might be right. Oh. Now I have to replay Pearl too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that that was cool. And then Chris was telling me about. Um, well, and then Rotom is like possessing stuff in the, the house. TV. The TV. Okay. And I mean, that's Rotom's whole shtick is like he goes into different appliances yeah. and um, brings them to life, essentially. Um, Which is funny considering how, like, when you get Rotom and you're able, once you're able to form change him, most of the time the item that you get, it's a catalog. Mm-hmm. So it's like, am I, am I just ordering these things for Rotom <laughs> to possess? Is that what's happening here? That's so funny because I forgot that that was how you do that in those games because in Legends Arceus, you have to buy from the trader um, like a microwave and a refrigerator and a lawnmower and then they sh- then they show up in your house. I didn't know you could even get those things and change Rotom's form mm-hmm. in that game. They show up in your house and then you interact with them in your quarters and have a Rotom in your party. A microwave and a lawnmower and um, what? I wish I could look it up. Lawnmower is one of them. Fridge is one of them. Fan is one of them. Um, no, I just meant in, in Legends Arceus. Yeah, that, yeah. Yep. Those things shouldn't but exist. But essentially what it is is it's like when you talk to the trader, it's not like buy this refrigerator. It's buy this mysterious uh, box. Okay. Buy this mysterious motor. Like. So- my my guess would be like, oh, I found these things in a uh, time space detor- distortion. I I think that that is a good theory. Yeah, I like that. Um, so yes, you can do that in Legends Arceus, but I like the idea of the catalog because so it's like track. sorry. <laughs> no, I think it's relevant. Um, but anyways, another um, haunted house that appears in um the games X and Y. Mm. I will let Chris talk about because I never finished X and Y. Oh, so, I didn't know that. Yeah, so I don't even know about this. I would this. recommend. Yeah. would genuinely recommend going back to those ones. They're good. Um, so, yeah, in X and Y, and, I mean, this is pulling from memory a lot slash a little bit of Googling that I did this morning. Uh, back in X and Y, the, there's Route 14, which is this, like, eve, almost, like, constantly evening time looking marshy area, mostly always raining. Uh, where you can find a good amount of ghost-type Pokemon out in the wild. Like, you can find just Wild Haunter, um, and you can find Goomy for the first time. Woo! Goomy's, like, one of my favorite 6th Gen Pokemon, and so I was very, very happy. Like, I I, I squeed at, at, <laughs> at Goomy getting revealed. Like, I was I was so excited for that to be our pseudo. I love um, that. Anyway, that's another thing. We're talking about ghosts and spooky <laughs> stuff. On Route 14, for one, the, the theme music. I don't know if it's the music for, again, for Route 14 itself or for the house that's there. Um, but it is such good, like, creepy, just vibing Pokemon music. Not mm-hmm. like not like Lavender Town where it has that unsettling beat to it, which I do like because yep. it's supposed to be there. But Route 14 is more, like, vibing spooky. Interesting. Okay, it does. Uh, and then, because I didn't actually take the time to look into the event proper that occurs... Uh, there is some form of like haunted spooky house on Route 14. Uh, there is a older gentleman in there that you can speak to. I think he tells you and your friends like scary stories. Okay. Uh, that leads up to a big like spooky jump scare moment. Something or I, I vaguely, I vaguely, I very much remember the camera shifting around a little bit and then panning full into like a. Not Vine Boom, but effectively yeah. the same kind of yeah. sound effect. Um, and then I think everyone hightails it back out of the house. That's kind of what I'm remembering. Interesting, for, okay. I know it is like a haunted house spooky event kind of area. Um, also, X and Y is where everyone became obsessed with Hex Maniacs. 
Tell me about those. Uh, just Hexmaniac, the trainer class. Yeah. Um, Why are people obsessed with them? I, th I think it was just one of those things that, like, I, I like the crazy lady. Internet, oh. Internet's going to go nuts for oh, the crazy okay. ghost lady. I see. Yep. This makes sense. Now, were hex maniacs not introduced prior to X and Y? They'd been a thing, but they were more... Certainly in, like, Gen 3 when they were around, they... Actually, because hex maniacs might not have always been around, there because there was channelers. Oh, first, okay. Which were, like, the very stereotypical or very traditional, rather, like... Japanese priest is that right, the right word? I don't know necessarily, but the mm -hmm. outfits they were in, like mm -hmm. the the long robe getups and the, the headbands with all the candles and oh yeah, I remember. I know I you're don't talking quite about. know the proper terms. Yeah, I, I wouldn't know either. Um, but so, so then we hex had those for a long turned time. into hex maniacs, and did they get rid of channelers? I think they got rid of channelers like around Gen three era. Hex maniacs might have, or like Gen three, Gen four, something like that. Okay. Um, I just know hex maniacs got. Like big with X and Y. Gotcha. Um, and oh. also, there, I mean, because again, I think there's a hex maniac involved with the Route 14 stuff. Okay. I yep. feel like I can remember seeing a hex maniac in that house anyway. Sure. But anyway, uh, there's another place that that model is used in X and Y for some spooky stuff, and that is in Lumio City. I don't know what building, but it is just one of those buildings with an elevator. You'll go into this office building up the elevator. Uh, and you'll walk into, I think it's a completely empty, like, office space. Uh, like, there's stuff around, but in terms of people, completely empty. Um, you walk in and you just stop. There's nothing. There's, like, complete silence. And then from behind you, a hex maniac sprite, like, glides forward, hits the bottom of the screen, says, no, you're not the one. Goes off screen and is gone, and you're good. You can move around. What? And then you go looking further in that room, she's gone. And never appears again, and you don't have anything, any idea what that has to do with Yeah, I don't think she can show up again. Bizarre. And it, it doesn't have anything, like, to it at all. It's just, that's, that's that all the event is. That is fucking cool, though, to yeah. be honest with you. That's fucking cool. I love these little moments. Like, and there's, like, other non-creepy moments that I feel like happens in Pokemon games that they're just like, okay, yeah, this is why I play this game. Like, you know, there's all the other, like... You know, there's the the mechanics of like catching Pokemon and mm -hmm. battling them and stuff, but then it's like that shit gets old after a while, and you need some of these random interactions with NPCs. Keep it fresh. To keep it fresh, for sure. It's keep like us on our toes. Totally. Like in different cool little places to go into, like these haunted houses and stuff. And I'm thinking of for some reason right now I'm thinking it's not really like super spooky. I feel like maybe there's a spooky aspect to it, but the um, SS Anne. Um, like I remember it, that's in leaf green, right? Or, in, yeah. um, so like, um, you know, you can go into it and stuff and it's like, you know, you're exploring rooms, like you're, you're battling people too, but it's like the old, it's like these haunted houses where you just go in and like, you're interacting with things and it's like just these random people. And for what happened, something happens in the anime episode of the SS Anne. And I remember being affected by it. <laughs> I don't know. And now, okay, now That's I need to look, too long. yeah, now I need to look this up because I remember like re-watching it. There's only one thing I can think of with the SSN, but it's not necessarily on the SSN. Uh-huh. Um, and I was going to touch on this, but I mean, it's a good way to circle back around yeah. to Lavender Town. So when you first go into the Pokemon Tower, you fight your rival. Mm -hmm. In all versions, I believe, you fight your rival. The previous, the last time you ever fought your rival before this was on the SSN. Mm -hmm. Okay. And eradicate in their party. Then there's no eradicate. There's no eradicate in their party when you fight them in Pokemon Tower. So it fucking died. The prevailing theory is that somewhere along the way something happened, or you just went to him in your previous battle, uh, and somehow that eradicate died, and that's why your rival is there. I just got chills, bro. That's crazy, dude. And that, that's, <clears throat> that's the prevailing theory. That is so, so interesting. Um, that makes, like, see, conversations like this, I'm like, shit, I need to pull out my DS. <laughs> shit, I need to find my Game Boy games. <laughs> like, uh, it's Too and much it's, temptation, it's not enough time. Literally, 100%.
but um it's so fascinating how there's this like all of these different there's so many different little things that yeah. happen um i need to write down S S E N because I want to rewatch that episode and see what I'm thinking of. Isn't it kind of like the Titanic? Doesn't it like start to sink? I don't know. I feel like I, that... I feel. I mean, an anime episode I feel like would do something like that with the states. Yeah. Um, like in the games, I know it's just you go in, you can battle the people in their yeah, in their yeah. dorms, and then you talk to the captain, rub his back, and you're good to go. <laughs> you literally, you literally like rub his back because of his seasickness. The, the captain of the S S N. Okay, now, okay, I really need to pull out my old games now. And this is the dilemma that I've talked about before, which is that I don't want to get rid of my old save files. Yep. And so, like, maybe I need to just, like, purchase a new um, oh copy God. of the game. A new... I know, like, I know that's that unreasonable. Or, or I guess I could get, like, an emulator or something. You know something. how much old, like, proper Pokemon well, games Well, I know, like, Emerald is really expensive, but I don't know about... I feel like Black Knight had a copy of... Um, Fire Red and Leaf Green for yeah. like $99. $99? It's like 100 each. Dude. Just... Th- those. Because I guess, because they're not made anymore, so there's limited copies. Yeah. Like... And I mean, those those games, they're popular for a reason. It's Pokemon. Um, Like, sealed games can go for quite a bit. I well, Hell, I was able to, uh, when I was going through trying to get some money a long while back, and I, I sold off to GameStop my my other version. So yep. like, if I had a generation, it's like, well, I have both versions. I'll be happy getting rid of one. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the time, anyway, I would still trade in my, like I traded in my Soul Silver or something for still like 45 bucks. A DS game at the time that wow. was still like 40-ish or something. Or So fascinating. Or, it makes a lot of sense, though. Yeah. Um. And I am crazy enough to buy. Pokemon has aged, <laughs> but it doesn't age. No, I mean nobody. People are still just as obsessed with it as they as they were twenty years ago. Yeah, and, um, I mean, it, Pokemon is going to exist as long as the universe does. Absolutely. Frankly, at this point, at least I hope it does. <laughs> um, I feel for for now for now, the overall IP probably too big to fail. I I could be wrong. I but am inclined to agree with you. Because there's definitely aspects of it that'll like get shut down and And well it morphs over time. Like I mean I think like well like if you look at something like Pokemon Go. Mm. The only reason that Niantic created that and linked it with Pokemon and the only reason why they can still collect our data and why people still play that game is because people love Pokemon. Yeah. If they had just like created their own characters, or like even if you look at like Pikmin, the Pikmin mobile game, right, Bloom. Pikmin Bloom, and if you look at Monster Hunter now, like those are n- like nobody plays those. I'm a huge Monster Hunter fan. You know how long ago I deleted Monster Hunter now off my phone? They're like it is the Pokemon aspect that keeps people coming back. To that like li- game that literally only exists to steal your data yep. and to map map the world, like and so it's it's a fascinating thing to think about. Um, so I do agree with you. I think like it will morph and change over time, but I think like unless I mean even people have always had a problem with certain Pokemon. Like, oh, it's uninspired. Oh, it's just a flamingo. Like all this stuff. But then it's like. Brother, they've always been out of ideas. They made two. They made a exactly. ball and a pile of sludge in the first generation. <laughs> yeah, yes, and I, I, you know, I saw a post the other day that was like, "It's just a flamingo," and it's like, "Bro, where have you been?" Pokemon that look like Pidgey is just real a bird. things have existed. Spearow in is every just a bird. Generation, any every generation. And so. I will always bring it back to Gen One because it's like this is where it started. This is where it got huge. Yeah. And look at all of this. Yeah. There's a rat. There's a mouse. Rattata there's is a, just bird, a, mouse. a bird. A like. bird. Like you said, there's a there's a pokeball looking thing. There's a pile of sludge. <laughs> like there's a fish. Here's a like a big koi fish. Yeah. Like, you know, Since like, then, we went from that to we got a generation with an ice cream cone. Mm-hmm. And oh, what's a good one to pair that against in uh, Gen 5? Something insanely cool. I don't know, but in, I mean, the legendaries, the legendaries from that generation yeah. were pretty sick. I mean, you get Kyurem, Zekrom, and Reshiram. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. 
yeah, you can just say like, eh, dragons, <laughs> but like, still gonna make those designs. Exactly. Yep. It's like they've still. Yeah. That's just a quintessential aspect of Pokemon at this point. It's just like, uh, yeah, they've always they've always been out of ideas. That's. <laughs> And if they're out of ideas now, then they always have. Been. Exactly. That, that's what I meant by that. Um, so let's talk. We have a few more things to touch on here. Mm. Let's talk ghost gym leaders. Yeah. So the ones that you have here on this list, the only one that I can actually like picture in my brain is Rhyme. And because that is that's funny because I could not remember her name for the life of me. That is so funny. Like, but it is because that's one of the most recent. Is that Scarlet Violet? Yes. That's because yep. she's the it's ghost the most recent. And with, of course, you know, the game that I love the most, Legends Arceus, you don't have gym leaders. Right. You have wardens, but that's not the same. You're not battling them. Right. Um. Uh. So I do remember Rhyme. It's a pretty like, to me, distinct character. But I'm only saying that I think she's be- really cool, and I can definitely remember like her and her battle and all that. It's just, I can yeah, remember the name, her, her name, which is funny. <laughs> well, the name is ironic because it's like she's, yeah, she's a, a rapper. rapper. <laughs> um, but I think the only reason why it's sticking out to me is because I've played it mm. somewhat recently, like within the past couple of years. Yeah. Whereas these other ones, if I saw pictures of them, I would remember. But names alone, yeah, I don't. Like starting off with Gen Two, we got Morty, Ecrutic City. Ghost type gym later. Uh, I believe his ace was a Gengar because they didn't have much for Gen 2 ghosts. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it was cool. Heart Gold, Soul Silver gym looked really cool uh, for that one. I think it was something like you're going down a path uh, with a flashlight Ooh. and trying to light the way. I forget exactly. Um, then after Morty for... Because because you listed gym leaders and so I I yeah I actively didn't add like Phoebe from Gen three. She's Is that like, elite four. She's elite four. Gotcha. Uh, although I technically cheated Gen seven because Acerola <laughs> is for one a trial captain. There's there's just no gyms. There's okay. no gyms in Gen seven. What's Gen seven? What is the uh, Gen seven? You have the trials where you the trial captains have a task for you to complete, and at the end of that task you'll fight a totem Pokemon, which is basically a bigger beefed up version. What game oh, is Gen program. Seven? Uh, Sun and Moon. Oh, yeah, I never. I just didn't play that oh, game. Oh, that's period, right. You just so. didn't play it at all. Gotcha. Yeah. So yeah, no gems in Sun and Moon at all. And Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. Interesting. I did not know that. Yep. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, but yeah. Oh, also, so Ace Rolla, Trial Captain Ace Rolla. So there's no gems. The Pokemon League is being established in Sun and Moon. Or, or the Alola Pokemon League is being established. I see. In that game. So it's not like it's Legends Arceus where we're like in the past. It's just no, it's a different this, region yes. that has not created a It is a this Pokemon region League setting yet. up its own Pokemon League. Cool. Yes. Okay, that's neat. Um, and then... I can't remember if it's Sun and Moon or Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. I think it's Sun and Moon. Uh, Acerola is also one of the Elite Four. Oh, interesting. Yeah, they... So they their Elite Four has just been... Um, assembled and it's elite for a character that you don't meet at all in the game until this po- moment in time which i mean for previous pokemon games elite four like that's you that's how it that's happens that's usually how it is yeah. you're going to the elite four these are the first time you're seeing these characters but lately you know we'd been well so i feel like gen s- no gen six we didn't meet any of the elite four beforehand we had met all of the elite four in gen seven Mm-hmm. Is the thing. So I, I get, that's more than what I'm getting. I at. see. We had met everyone else except for this one woman who I It's an for, interesting choice. I even forget her name, but she was flying typed and okay. she was a golfer. A golfer? <laughs> yeah, she's she's like an older woman, a golfer. She has flying type. Wait, Pokemon. I kinda love that. <laughs> yeah. Um and I hate that I'm forgetting her name now. Uh but yeah, so you had Ace Rolla. It was her. And now I can't even remember the other two. Uh, Fantina. Four members. But now, uh, yeah, moving on. Gen 4. Ghost-type gym leader, Fantina. Gen um, 4. This is a Sinnoh. This is Sinnoh. This is Diamond Pro hmm. Platinum. Does Fantina have the purple hair? Yes. Okay. All right. I she's know who that drift, is. She's the drift, bl- drift Blim lady. Gotcha. Or, well, no, because her ace was a Miss Magius. But she, I know she has a Drift Blim. Yeah. I thought she would. Yeah. She's more designed like a Miss Magius. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know she has a Drift Blim. I think that Drift Blim caused me problems in the past. So that's why <laughs> Aftermath. Yeah. Um, 
And her, I think, hers is interesting because she was at a different point in time in the game, depending on what one you played, I think. Oh. Because I think she's either the fourth like or versus fifth. versus diamond or pearl or platinum? Yeah. Like, I think she's either the fourth or fifth gym leader, depending on which. Like, I think Weird. she's... Right? Because you... I know in the... In the in, in BDSP, uh, I think it's Crasher Wake and... No, it's Crasher Wake and Maylene that I think you could fight either one of them for your next badge. Okay. And then... It, so maybe it is... I don't know. I'm going to look that up after Do this levels episode. scale? When something like that happens, do levels scale? Like, if you decided to go to one... No, if they, I think the only time they've had pick one gym leader or the other, um, at least uh, I remember in BDSP, I think the two were roughly the same level. I see. Okay. And then the next one after them was the next like tier up. Gotcha. Um, but I don't think in the past when you've had like, well, because I know for a fact, at least with Scarlet and Violet, uh, you can go to whoever, whenever, and if you get rocked by those levels... Right. You get rocked by those levels. Right. It's not scaled. Because um, Scarlet Violet, it's, I wish it was scaled, but it's like. There's like, the, like you can technically go wherever you want. Yeah. But there is like a. Fixed levels. Yes. Like everything is at a fixed. So you wouldn't go to like Battle Tulip like at the beginning because you just no. can't. Yeah. She's a psychic gym leader. Right? Yeah. yeah. She's seven. Something like that. But there's I, like also I made, like you I looked have up to an like... ordering of everything when I first played the game. I'm like, when I first play a game, I'm like, all right, I want to play it like through in the smoothest so interesting. order possible. And so like what in what order roughly? So it was like, oh, first you do uh, uh the the I think it, I think the the guy that said like first you do cloth, then you do bug gym, then you do team star, then you do Something like that. I am the opposite. I like to know the least amount about the game as possible That's before right. I start the game so that I can just like I just want the figure levels. it out. Yeah. I pretty much just want the levels of like sure. what I'm going up against so that I can't be like, okay, I'm not going here yet. I, the only thing I remember having a difficult time with in that game was like one of the team star bosses. That was only ever, that was the only ever time I had a problem. That was just because of the car. Yeah. Yes. Which, by the way, give us a, a <laughs> mega rev of room, mm. Legend ZA. You know, I was just thinking about this when we were talking about X and Y. Is it, it, it's called ZA because it's based on X and Y, and the next letters are Z and A. Oh, my God. <laughs> Is that true? That's funny. But, I mean, like, X, that would work if it was, like, a, B, because it's yeah. X, Y, then it's X, Y, Z, I don't know. Like you're starting Z, the alphabet over Z, A, again. otherwise it's, yeah, okay, I guess, yeah, like you're going going to Z. But is, and it, then, is it referencing the dog Pokemon? Why Why is it called Z, A? The dog Pokemon. The guy that's green, that in Pokemon, oh, Z- <laughs> Pokemon Go, you need like Zygarde. cells and shit. Zygarde, the dog slash snake slash golem monster thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, the Z, I totally expected. I don't know what the A is supposed to be for, if it's supposed to stand for anything or if it is just, like, meant to be A. It's, like, A through Z, but reversed. Yeah. Cute. Well, and, I mean, then I also think about AZ from X and Y. Um, the, oh, is there a character? The, like, 700-foot-tall dude that's, like, 3,000 years old. See, I guess I do need to play this. Apparently, I need to play this game before ZA comes out. Yeah. Yes, I would definitely recommend playing X and Y. You think so? Yes, I would definitely recommend playing X. Or, or y would it be cool to play Z A and then play X Y? Because are you going to want to play X Y after Z A? No. <laughs> because I have X and Y. I can give you a copy. I I have I have oh. X. I believe I just never I like got maybe like fourteen hours into it or something like that. So that one I feel like maybe I wouldn't mind starting over. But then again, it's like, again, Digital Hoarder over here. Like, my, what, what year did that come out? Do you remember? Boy, howdy. Uh, 2014 or something like that? Probably. Like That's 14, probably right 15. around where I, where I was uninterested with Pokemon mm. for a couple of years. 14-year-old um, me um, would be upset if I um, deleted my save file. So... <laughs> 
So we'll see what yeah, happens that's there. I'll lend you a copy. I don't care. I don't want to get rid of your save file. I already did. What do you mean you already did? Because you started the, over? The future me that's going to delete the save file has already done it. Oh. <laughs> we'll see. I might take you up on that offer. Um, yeah, it's no big deal. So, okay, we've gotten way sidetracked here. Yeah, I, f- I forgot where we were coming from. We were talking about... We're, we're yapping ex- too hard. You have... We got back onto the XY. One last ghost-type gym leader. Oh, yes, we were talking about the gym To leaders. talk about. Um, which is Alistair. Because we were fan... Because right, I was I was going over Fantina, and then mm-hmm. the like, hey, can you fight her here? Then, mm-hmm. yeah, Alistair, who again also forgot his name, but I hate that because I really love his design mm-hmm. and like the sports clothes from Sword and Shield. I loved that we got those because as soon as I got the ghost stuff, all my outfit was all put together. I was so happy. Um, god damn it! So I'm so upset that the, the internet's still gone because <laughs> like I just, um. Oh, I feel like I kind of remember this Look this one. Kid. Yeah, he well, he was also one of those. Oh, ones. so creepy! Oh, he's cute. Yeah, he he's also one of those ones that was version exclusive, the gym leader. Oh, um, so that's why because he's in Shield, so I would have never seen him. There you go. Who is the one in? Uh, so in Sword, it's Bead, the fighting type, and then later on too, there is a gym where you're either. It's either ice or rock. Ice or rock. Okay. Um, which that one's funny because. Uh, so this is the one that's in. Yes, that is them. And that is an adorable picture. <laughs> um, and yes, Alistair, he has this like creepy shy guy looking mask, but he's like the cutest, sweetest boy. Underneath. Yeah, that is so cute. Um I was just going to say also with the other version exclusive gym leader of that generation, it's just kind of funny because in sword you're fighting, I think Gordy is his name or Gordon Uh, in shield. I forget her name and I hate that I do because I love her. Uh, But in shield you're fighting the ice type gym leader, which is his mom. Oh, well, he's like, an adult. Yeah. And so you got like a kind of older lady in this like winter gear. Wait, I love that. Yeah, it's cool. Dude, why did I pick sword? <laughs> I I like sword. Well, if you ever want to play shield. But I'm annoyed. I do need to borrow your copy of um Did you play Brilliant Diamond or Shining Pearl? I have Brilliant Diamond. I need to and you have like a physical copy of yes. that. I need to borrow that so that I can oh, get yeah, Dark Rye on Legends oh. Arceus. Pokemon, I tend to try and, uh, oh, do you need save data from both? Or do you just not have? I don't have either. Okay. That's a good choice. I never played that game. (laughs) I know. And I know, which is ironic because, like, I love Pearl and Diamond, but people hated those games. So I was like, whatever, I'm not. I've thought about it since. I'm like, oh, I'll buy one. But then I'm like, fuck, I really don't want to spend, like, $60 on a game that people hated. So. Um, Yeah. So Alistair uh, and and then uh, his whole thing, he had the Gigantamax Gengar. Um, I don't know if they were using Gigantamax in that fight yet. No, they were because Bede has a the Machamp. Because it's like the first couple of gyms. No, that's right. Because what it is, it's you. It's because it's what is it? Grass, water, fire is the order for your first three. Okay. And then it's fire. It's Kabu that uses. Um, it's Kabu that uses a Gigantamax Center Scorch. I just thought about a thing completely unrelated oh. to this. I'll tell you after. Okay. Um, and then after there, everyone's using a Gigantamax. I see. So. Gotcha. Yes. Um, yeah. Alistair, cute ghost kid from Generation 8. I love him. I want his mask, like, on my wall at home. Like, a genuine, actual version of it. Uh, Somebody absolutely makes one of those. Oh, it's got, it's got to exist. Um, that's it for the... Or no, because then after Alistair, of course, of course, it's Rhyme. One yes. We, we were just talking about, I always forget the name, and now I'm forgetting her entirely. Uh, but no, she's really cool. And I did like having one gym battle just be a double battle. And noth- like it's not like a Coliseum thing where everything is double battles. It's like, no, it's just this one gym. It I is- forgot that she was did double battles. Yep. Um, What's the reasoning behind that? I don't know. Huh. And it's also a really easy boss battle. Uh-huh. Like, it's... I mean, 
Scarlet Violet's pretty easy. Pokemon's, only, yeah. as far as I'm concerned, only getting easier as it goes on. And while I understand a level of ease, because ultimately it is a game targeted towards children. Yes. Though I'm hoping... The difficulty options I would like. Yeah, but like, when you start the game, easy, medium, hard. Like, give me some options. With Legends Arceus, like, that game is relatively easy. It's harder to learn the mechanics at first because it's a completely well, new now way. Because you're having to dodge and... Exactly, you yep. have to dodge. Like, when you're catching a Pokemon... You don't just like run into it to get into a battle. You have to either throw your Pokemon. You do that, you'll take it. damage. Exactly, and like you can, you can black like instead of blacking out in the game and like oh you just show up at the Pokemon Center and like lose some money or whatever. Does that happen? You lose money. Um, yep. And in this game, you lose precious items that took you forever to you lose like to, half of your stuff oh every God, time you go down. A crazy amount to the point where half like if not all. I will save constantly, and if I accidentally die, I will quit the game. Because I'm like, I am not relying on some random person to hopefully pick up my item bag. Which I find that so interesting. I wonder at what point does it, like, save and read that and send it to the server? I've always wondered that. Because I have also picked up other people's bags and then quit the game to reset something. Mm -hmm. And then, technically, I never picked up those bags because I didn't save. Yeah, that is interesting. It, it must just like there has to be a lag. I feel like it must just sync up every time you initiate a save. Yeah, that would be my only my best guess because otherwise, like, it's a weird. How would it, how would it know system. when to send out to other people's games? Like, oh, your bag is lost, and now they need to get it free. Yeah, especially if because if I quit the game and I technically I never lost the items, like there's no bag to be, for someone to retrieve. Exactly. So it it, it it must be based on save. Yeah. Um. Um. But like that, the um, speaking of difficulty level, like the game is like you know it's a new thing to learn. But then the final battle, which I won't spoil. Oh, in um, Legends. In Legends Arceus, because. <laughs> which final battle? The, <laughs> kind the of like, spoilers, but which final battle? The final, like the final battle. Pokemon battle. E- Pokemon trainer battle. That's what I meant. Yes. 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 Okay. I, I, I get what you're in saying. In the yeah. main line, like, yes, like yeah. there, are, you can do stuff afterwards. But like the main, like dun, it dun, leads dun, up to. Dun, dun. Yes, that the is music. insane. I won't say who it is because I got spoiled, and I wish I had never been spoiled on who you battle. But it is like, it is incredibly hard, notoriously hard, mm-hmm. and actually like. Um, Trying to defeat um, Arceus is hard too. Yes, that is that is. Um, God. I, well, I, that one not, I had to do the thing where it was like restart from this point. Yeah, exactly. I had to do the same thing. I had to. I can't do it. You, all you can't. I mean, it's it is incredibly hard, and it takes a lot of time. And if you wanted to do it without save points, like it would take you forever. Um, but the final Pokemon trainer battle, like, is notoriously hard, and you have to like really strategize. Um, and, um, yeah, so. I mean, it, it, it introduces a, and I won't say specifically what, and I'll, I'll tell you again after, but like, it introduces a challenge that no Pokemon trainer has ever faced until this game. Yeah. Yep. Which is crazy. It is like, it's so, it is so cool. Like I highly, re- if you have not played, if you are listening to this podcast and you are an hour and a half into this podcast episode and you have not played Pokemon Legends Arceus, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> Straight up. There you have it. Straight up. I will Venmo you $60 to play Legends Arceus. You have a Arceus. switch in any interest into Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Let her know. Um, so, anyways, where I was going with that is I hope ZA has a similar kind of like difficulty. An actual difficulty option. Or, either or a, di- a difficulty option or, like... The same difficulty curve. A difficulty curve where it's, like, there's some point in the game where it's, like, oh, I actually, like, have to try really hard and actually, like, have to, like, repeat things mm-hmm. because I'm failing. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Cool. We have a few. Let's let's uh let's wrap up here. Yeah, we sure. have a few more things to talk about. I think one of the ones that I want to briefly touch on, which I like, don't know much about, is Missing No, mm. um, which is a classic Pokemon game glitch, um, where uh, like 
pile of um, pixels would show up on your screen. Basically, it looks like a totem pole of, mm-hmm. of messed up pixels and uh, corrupted texture. Yes, with quite. the name missing no, like missing number. Yeah, yeah missing dot number. And then, because uh, I, I had actually, back back in the day, I had a Pokemon Red that my I got it from my older brother. And uh, I, I actually caught missing no. That's crazy, bro. <laughs> it's I forget the whole process of how you initiate it, but it ends up with you like trying to surf on Cinnabar, but you kind of end up surfing inside the ground and you just go back and forth and then eventually a Pokemon encounter will be there and it'll be a, I think it's like a levels, it's either a level zero or a level 99 mm. missing no. And there's actually another one. That'll show up, but I'm forgetting. I don't know if it even has a name or if the game just crashes out when you. I was gonna say. So did it screw up your game when you caught it? Nope. I could still like catch it, and I don't. I don't know what else might have corrupted. Potentially, some other things may have. But I. I did actually have a missing no for a bit. I don't remember what, if anything, it did in battle. I think it just has splash. Interesting. Um, and then I leveled it up. Uh. And evolved into a Kangaskhan. What? Yeah. So. I don't know if that's like a, I mean, people might already fully know the whole thing. Probably people already fully know the whole deal behind missing mm-hmm. no or whatever, but I don't, and I never looked it up. So I'm just thinking like, is that like they're trying to, or was that like a, there's a corrupted empty slot for where a like baby Kangaskhan was supposed to be or something like that in uh-huh. the initial planning stages or I don't know. I don't know. I never looked into it. Um, Missing No is a glitched Pokemon who was not intended to be in the game. It, it allegedly was intended to be a Pokemon that could evolve into either Cubone or Kangaskhan. Well, would you look at that? Evolve into Cubone! <laughs> See, you got the other one, unfortunately. <laughs> um, game Freak intended to remove it late in development, but simply couldn't get rid of all the code in time. That's funny. Um, also... So that's probably where the, uh, the well, I guess the theory, that's almost confirmed at this point. The the theory kind of derived from that Cubone is just a baby Kangaskhan that lost its mom. Oh. I didn't yeah, realize that's been, that. That's another one that's been floating around. Um, So it's interesting. Like, I mean, it's really cool that you have had a personal experience with Missing No, whereas I have just, like, seen memes and stuff about it and and lore um and i don't even know that much about it i briefly clicked on a reddit post that like somebody was speculating that like um missing no was supposed to be um it wait let me see the t the tldr missing no is a failed mewtwo created by the fossil reviving scientist which can warp its surroundings due to its attempt to emulate Mew's ability to transform. That's interesting, and I like that better than it just being a, a, a glitch. Yes, because the reality is it is a glitch. Yep, it is just a glitch. But people will make lore about literally everything. Oh, of course. Um, so that, That's fun. That that's is fun. Super creative stuff, and I love because it. Because supposedly, um, or not supposedly, um... Wait. This says that um, it's well known that Cinnabar Island, the place where Missing No can be encountered, um, contains a burnt out lab where presumably experiments used to take place. We don't really know what happened there, but there seems to be a link with Mew. In Mewtwo's Pokedex entry, it says that Mewtwo was created by a scientist after years of horrific gene splicing and DNA engineering experiments. Given that this took years of horrific experiments, there were bound to be a few mishaps. Enter missing no. And it, it was the Cinnabar Laboratory Mewtwo was created in, right? I I don't know. Oh, I thought. But it seems like it seems like that's probably why this, the this theory has come about is the fact that there is a lab at Cinnabar. And Mewtwo was made in a lab, um, so it's it's I interesting. Mean, it like is, it is surfing on the coast of uh, Cinnabar that gets you missing now. Dude, people love creating <laughs> things and creating stories. It's just too many fun links between. It things. is it is amazingly it is amazing how like 
just how much people um, will come up with in the absence of information no, and like wanting to have a background or a, or a reason for something. So it's 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 pretty cool. Um, okay, we are we are getting towards the end here. I do want to quickly touch on something that we have already talked about before in the past, but it is only fitting for a Halloween episode, which is my buddy Drifloon. <laughs> I love Drifloon so much. Um, Tell us how much you love Drifloon. I literally love Drifloon so much that, like, it's it's interesting though, like you know, because whenever I'm asked to be like, "What's your favorite Pokemon?" I like. Drifloon is a favorite. I don't know if it is the favorite. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, get you. I don't think I have a favorite, and which is fascinating because I think just the combination of playing so many games and just like being attached to like many multiple of them. I I think one of my new favorites is Arceus. Like, I love. I just love. No. I love the idea really? of like this kind of like overarching like god pokemon that can take the form of or can take the type of any pokemon like that is just so fucking cool and the move judgment is like amazing like literally like the coolest move ever also it was like one of the coolest animations in the gen 4 games with like that i i don't want to say shaded mm-hmm. light but like the way you had like the darker area surrounding it it was just a light coming down on the other pokemon mm. it's a hard. really 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 cool pokemon so anyways i'm getting off track again drifloon is one of my favorites which is why it appears on the graphic of our podcast but um some information about drifloon drifloon has been given the reputation of being the signpost for wandering spirits it will carry children who are foolish enough to grab hold onto its arms into the afterlife if its body bursts open, Drifloon will release its soul and emanate a loud sound. Drifloon yearns to seek friendship with children, but will run away in panic if handled roughly. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is that one from? Because that sounds like when they started to try and taper it down. Um, that one is from Pearl, I believe. I Let me, um, let me finish this paragraph and then, because I picked out some of my favorite Uh, Pokedex entries of them and that was one of them Um, large groups of Drifloon gather during humid seasons flying wherever the wind takes them they will explode as a last resort effort to defend their groups Um, I got you homies (laughs) so um, needless to say I really like Drifloon I think that it's a dope Pokemon um, and I can relate a lot to it uh, also, one of the abilities that it has is called Aftermath, which I think is cool. And Aftermath will cause the opposing Pokemon to lose a fourth of its max HP if Drifloon faints due to a physical attack. So it's basically like I'm oh, taking you. Physical I'm, attack. Yeah, I'm huh. taking you down with me. Um, so Pearl, this is probably my favorite one, or Pokedex entry, is it tugs on the hands of children to steal them away. However. It gets pulled around instead. <laughs> okay, there it is. So that's what I was thinking because I was like, I know it's kind of messed up. Oh, okay, that's where <laughs> we get the funny. Uh-huh. Um, so I like the idea of like I'm trying to steal you, but the kid is just like, whoa, pretty balloon, and like carrying it around. Yes, another child for my. <laughs> <laughs> Diamond is a Pokemon formed by the spirits of people and Pokemon. It loves damp, humid seasons. So it, it like, it is, Drifloon is, like, your quintessential, like, ghost-type Pokemon. It is literally made of the spirits of dead people and yep. Pokemon, which and is crazy. And a cute little balloon. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> Sword's entry is perhaps seeking company. It approaches children. However, it often quickly runs away again when the children play too roughly with it. (laughs) Um, Which is very cute to imagine. Moon, if for some reason its body bursts, its soul spills out with a screaming sound, which 
considering it's made up of the spirits of dead people and Imagine Pokemon, I think th that's the sound of all of you. those spirits. <laughs> um, and then uh, Legends Arceus, the entry is said to lure away young children and carry them off to the afterlife. Some whisper that Drifloon are formed of reincarnated human souls, but these rumors are yet, as of yet, unconfirmed. Oh, so they they let it go go hard again with Legends Arceus. They did, which is funny, because in Legends Arceus, there is a very um, I wouldn't say a very prominent storyline, but there is a, a side quest. There is a side quest um, where a child has been taken. By a drift loon, and you find it on the beach. I think at first it was like, you know, my kid keeps running off yeah. for however long and won't keep, won't come back, or like, can you please go check in on him? Or and, you and you find, find it with a drift loon behind, like behind a shed too, like way far away from the village. Way out, yeah. <laughs> so I love that they included that. But I mean, like, drift loon is from Gen Four, right? Yep. So. I think Good it's time to act on it, that it is special. Thing. Yeah, it's special when there's a game that is particularly like about a certain generation to like flesh out some more of the lore of a Pokemon like and that. And they actually are like, okay, you've been telling us this whole time in the Pokedex mm -hmm. entry. Oh, no, it's happening right in front of us. Yeah, <laughs> like this isn't a joke. <laughs> um, Show me the, <laughs> what's under Mimikyu's cloak. <laughs> <laughs> Now's the time. I, what? Oh no, Mimikyu's Gen Seven. Never mind. I was gonna say we got With, Gen Six coming up, but yeah, I'm Gen Six because Fairy type. Yep. Um, so I think like the last thing we can just talk about quickly is that um, as a reminder, Pokemon Halloween, Pokemon Go Halloween Part One has started as has of, started as of us recording this episode. Yes. So I'm hoping to get this out this episode out tonight. Now that our internet has returned. Yes. Um. But I'm the episode. What a song. I know. <laughs> so frustrating. But um I am looking forward to some shiny costume Pokemon, hopefully. Same here. We got we have Froakie and Rowlet and Kula. If I don't I, I just want Froakie and Rowlet. I just I uh, Oh man, you know, no, I want the Rowlet shiny. I don't care. I'm gonna get mad if I don't get the Rowlet shiny. I did buy the costume party premium time research. For two bucks, that gives you however many encounters that is. Oh, damn. But they're all, it's like, so like, I'm sure this one is like Piplup, and this one is Froki, and this one is Rowlet, and this one is So are Froki and Rowlet the two new ones, or is Piplup new too? Piplup's not new. Okay. Piplup, it's that same kind of ugly hat. Oh, and now I'm going to hate that we can't evolve the Froki all the way, because... That's why I really want shiny. This ugly pumpkin hat. I uh, gotcha. That's why I really want. I mean, that's why I'd always want for shiny Froakie because shiny Greninja is so, mm. so good looking. Eventually, maybe we might be able to do that. But the, considering they haven't done that for like most of the starter it's, Pokemon it's like the, with car it's costumes. It's like the only fully evolved thing we ever get in a costume. It's either Snorlax or Gengar for Halloween. Yeah. I'm hoping. You want me the Gengar. I'm hoping for another. You want another shiny? Um, Pumpkaboo, Pumpkaboo, so that I can evolve it. Ah, uh, okay, I get you. Same. Um, damn, same. <laughs> but other than that, I'm not. Oh, and Zorua is has an uh, increased shiny odds um, during this event. So uh, be sure to apply a buddy that you know is like you would not be seeing that on the map. Yes, like put something shiny and big. <laughs> and this morning, well, right now I have a shiny mask, the one that you need to. Um, there's evolution requirements. Oh yeah, what, what is it for Runrigus? Win 10 raids. Yeah. I mean... It's fine, but it's also annoying. So I probably, for this event, I probably will change my buddy. I'm actually going to change yeah. it right now back to my Spinda. Um, so, yeah, I'm very excited for these Halloween events. Also, do, did we just get more Pico, or is that coming next? Yes, uh, more Pico, I believe, is out, but it is only available with... Paid research Aww. or um, field research tasks that are win two raids. Win two raids. Which is not that bad. No. But if you're trying to be That's free to play, idea. like so, so free to play, and you don't have raid passes like saved up, that can be frustrating. It's just really lame. 
I, I just find it really lame when Pokemon are locked behind things when when they're entirely locked behind because I mean the I mean just in general the being exclusive to research mm-hmm. as a whole I still don't like that but the fact that we can get some of the researches for free that's fine um, I'm not as mad about it but still like, oh, don't so lock it, it behind research it seems like maybe Froakie is not available until the second part no! but I don't know I am about to pay five dollars for this <laughs> this other event thing that gives you a more pico encounter but it also gives you a spear tomb encounter and i would kill for a shiny spear tomb there's a free time research out right now that will give you a spear tomb do not encounter. be emily yep listeners no please don't <laughs> listen to me like i don't spend your money on this stupid fucking game i mean ultimately um, do what you want with your money but we i'm recommend. begging you not to we'd recommend maybe not if you're going to spend money on Pokemon Go, you should buy Pokemon Legends Arceus. <laughs> yeah, if you're going to spend money on Pokemon, there you go. Buy a good game. So, that was a fun episode. I wish, I do wish I had been able to, like, put my thoughts together a little bit more cleanly, but we're both vis- busy, and the internet w- not working was unfortunate. Um but we made it work, and that was fun. Yeah. And, um, Good fun, spooky yapping. I'm also, like, really inspired to, like, pull out a lot of old Pokemon games. Hell yeah. So that's always, you know it's been a good podcast episode when I want to leave work immediately <laughs> to go play Pokemon. So I know what I'm doing tonight. Oh, yeah. Well, folks, thanks for listening to another episode of Team Yap, the Pokemon podcast. I'm not sure what's next for us. We, or am I, but, uh, you know, we'll we'll figure it out. We'll talk. We've got, you know, I really enjoyed doing that model building episode with that you. That was so much fun. And so I'm thinking I would love to do another visual episode, whether it's like playing, hooking up our game system to a computer or whatever it is. That would be dope. Definitely want to figure that out. I'd love to do some more TCG content. Yes. Uh, get some. Like maybe, like maybe we can go through our old, our stuff and see if we can put together a deck. I already have one put together. Well, so maybe unless, I can go through un- my unless stuff. Unless you'd want me to, you know, like start from scratch again, Chris. No, you don't have to do that because then that's. <laughs> well, because I, I only did it just for the hell of it. I oh, never yeah. thought I'd actually be using it for anything. So I think it would be fun to like just scrap together like whatever I can make work and see if it actually is playable. Because like, mind you, I was pulling from doing that. I was pulling from the <laughs> how many Paldean Fates ETBs mm-hmm. I'd bought at the time mm-hmm. and some other stuff. So it's like I had a lot I could go through, but I did keep it. Mostly like Paldean Fates or cards that showed up in Paldean Fates. They might just have been like from um, the base Scarlet Violet set or okay. anything from then. Because yeah, Paldean Fates was a reprint set pretty much. Interesting. All right. With the shinies. So I think that would be fun to to do another trading card episode. Yeah. Um, definitely requires a little bit of a, a little bit of preparation for for Emily and I'm I am. Uh, I'm a procrastinator, so we'll see. We'll, we'll see. figure it out. We'll figure it out, but stay tuned. We've always got some fun stuff up our sleeve for this podcast. We will do another movie review, too, Absolutely. as well. I'm looking forward to episode uh, Pokemon Pokemon the third movie. Um, we still got to do. We still got a couple of the couple of the other ones. ones. We still yep. Do Detective, Pikachu. Detective Pikachu. As soon as like our election coverage and stuff is over, things can open up a lot. I more. think that would be a perfect time to be like, dude, staff movie night. Who wants to watch Detective Pikachu? Oh, absolutely. And then who wants to join us for the podcast discussion? I, that I would think be fun. That's how, yeah, try and get, get folks together. We can do the one right after the other. Yep. So, needless to say, you're not going to want to miss our upcoming episodes of Team Yap the Pokemon po- podcast. Not at all. I wish you great luck if you play Pokemon Go and are into uh, ghost-type Pokemon or costume-type Pokemon because now's the time to play and hunt for shinies. And um, wish us luck as well because we have some some um, Pokemon that we really want. <laughs> oh well, with my eyes off, I don't need luck. <laughs> you know what? We're gonna save that for next episode because I don't even want to talk about that. That'd be a great opener. <laughs> there we go. Um, stay tuned for that if you want to know what Chris is talking about. So, anyways, again, thank you very much for tuning into episode eleven of Team Yap, the Pokemon podcast, our Halloween special. And um, we'll see you soon. Happy Halloween and thanks for listening.